Hey, BookTube. Sean here with Eclectic Reads, and today I want to do a book review of a book that I don't really see talked about really at all on BookTube. Um, it's a fantasy book, uh, first part of a trilogy called The a Crucible of Souls, and it's part book one of the Sorcery Ascendant sequence. Um, to start, I'm just going to read for you the description on Amazon because it explains it better than I could on my own. So, when young Caldon's parents are brutally slain, the boy is raised by monks who initiate him into the arcane mysteries of sorcery. Growing up plagued by questions about his past, Caldon vows to discover who his parents were and why they were violently killed. The search will take him beyond the walls of the monastery into the unfamiliar and dangerous chaos of city life, with nothing but his, nothing to his name but a mis pair of mysterious heirlooms and a handful of coins. He must prove his talent to become apprentice to a guild of sorcerers. But the world outside the monastery is a darker place than he ever imagined, and his treasured sorcery has disturbing depths he does not fully understand. As a shadowed evil manipulates the unwary and forbidden powers are unleashed, Keldon is plunged into an age-old conflict that will bring the world to the edge of destruction. Soon he must choose a side and face the true cost of uncovering his past. So that's the back cover blurb of the book. So as I read, we follow our would-be hero Keldon as he leaves the monastery and goes to the capital city of Anasoma where his quest really begins. Once he's there, he makes it a point to try and get in at the Guild of Sorcery. Now, the magic system in these books is based on uh, a system of crafting items uh, out of paper, out of metal, out of wood. The, the items are crafted. The, whatever material they're crafted out of makes a difference in how strong the crafting can be and how long the crafting can, la can last. Symbols are put into the crafting, which the sorcerers connect to the symbols that creates a, th a thread of connection to the symbol and that's how they initiate and use the use the powers of the item this whatever symbols are there is what the item can do uh Kaldun is one who can do crafting in many different mediums, including paper, which is a, apparently a difficult medium to put strong craftings into in this world. In this world, also, destructive and coercive sorcery is forbidden, and that becomes, that becomes a major part of the story. Uh, it is believed that nobody practices destructive or coercive sorcery. sorcery. It is a thing of legend, and is outlawed and no nobody does it anymore and Keldon eventually finds out that that is not true that there are people who who do that and that's really where his his quest starts to begin to discover what happened to his parents this book is a slow burn i gave it 3 stars on goodreads i did enjoy it i enjoyed mitchell hogan's writing style but the book itself, it's about 550, 600 pages, depending on your edition. And it's a lot. It's really building up the story for the next two books. It's a lot of character development. And it is a lot of description about the crafting system. When Keldon's crafting an item in this book, there is pages about how he's going about crafting it, the symbols and creating the connection. And it's almost a little too descriptive on the magic system. But like I said, I did enjoy the book and I do, I actually have started the second book in the, in the series. The other thing with this book is there, there are characters and storylines aside from Keldon's that by the end of the book don't, seem connected or like they're part of the same story um i know eventually this is all going to come to a head within the trilogy and we're going to see how how this these side characters and this side story that's going on will eventually affect Caldon's world but right now and even by the end of the book 
You don't. And I'm even in the first couple of hundred, I've even read probably the first couple hundred pages of the second book, and I'm still waiting for this to connect to Keldon and, and his story, because that's obviously the, the primary story of the book. So eventually this needs to connect to this. And it hasn't yet. And I, if you're looking for fast-paced uh, fantasy, then that might irritate you. With Mitchell Hogan's writing style and the way he has crafted the story, I don't mind the slow burn. I, I want, I'm, I want to find out how this is going to connect. I'm not, I'm not irritated that this hasn't connected yet. And where somewhere in some cases maybe I would be if if I didn't really care for the writer's writing style or the story itself wasn't engaging enough, I might be irritated that this part hasn't connected to this part yet, even where I'm at in the second book. But it hasn't bothered me at all. So Crucible of Souls by Mitchell Hogan. I would recommend reading it. Um, and I wouldn't ever not recommend somebody read a book because everybody has their own styles and tastes. And just because I might not like something doesn't mean you won't like it. But if you are into epic fantasy and especially very story character driven epic fantasy, then I would recommend this. But be prepared for the slow burn and for this to be mostly a setup story to what's coming. Um... This book doesn't have really its own quest that really resolves itself in this book to continue on into a next book. The way this book ends, you need you need to get into the second book. So that's that's it. That's my review of A Crucible of Souls. Uh, if you've read this book, uh, please hit me up in the comments and let me know because I don't haven't seen anybody talk about this book. So I'd like to know if there's more people out there who have read this um, or if this sounds interesting or if you had a different thought about it than I did. Hit me up in the comments. If you like this and would like to see uh, more reviews from me, let me know. Like, comment, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in my next video.